Hey to everyone. Um, today's topic is the control tower. Uh, I, I'm not sure how, how many of you have heard about this tool that it was uh, released uh, like in July 2019. Uh, but I hope that it might be interesting for you. So let's start. Uh, and as always, we will start from some introduction why uh, it was decided to develop this tool. Uh, we work with customers and uh, as you know that uh, every customer that we have, they uh, want to go to market in a fast way. Uh, because again, if, uh, so for example, when we have any startup and they develop some products, they want to go to market as fast as it's possible uh, because it uh, helps them to start returning their money and invest it into the project, right? Uh, maybe, so, Different customers that different reasons have to go to market fast uh, to do some updates very fast way, right? At the same time, um, of course, customers want to be flexible. They don't want to, you know, like hard code something. So we use, we like to use modules. We like to use uh, some reusable code the same way with customers. They don't want to invest lots of money to redo some stuff. And uh, of course, the security is very important uh, these days uh, because, you know, like there are lots of different compliances and if you, uh, if your company leaked some data, then you will be fined and it's very uh, painful point. And uh, uh, very often, um, especially new companies, they decide uh, to start working in cloud, right? Because they don't want to invest in uh, data centers and so on. And when they come to cloud, especially to AWS, we are going to talk about AWS today. The first point that they, they face is the accounts. Uh, two words about accounts. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you are aware of them, but still. So the AWS account, this is uh, like permission boundary for your resources. When you create this AWS account no, and you create resources in, within it, uh, nobody uh, can get access to these resources until you explicitly allow that, right? So at the same time, uh, this, uh, this accounts, they helps you to, they help you to uh, build some limits, uh, some throttling. So, for example, uh, they uh, help you to, in situations like if you start to uh, create too much resources, maybe there is something wrong. And uh, AWS accounts has limits. And uh, for example, if you have a limit to create maximum 100 EC2 instances and something went wrong, you won't be charged like for 200 instances, right? And at the same time, uh, accounts they help it was uh, to um, to limit you on how ma how many requests can you send to AWS because again they uh, have resources and they should care about other customers. And uh, again, uh, our accounts they provide separate billing. And this is very useful, especially from business business perspective, because very often business wants to know how much do they spend for a particular environment, for a particular uh, application, and so on. So customer comes uh, to AWS and uh, they need to create AWS accounts. And here they face another issue that uh, if they don't have any expertise or something like that. So um, they need to decide how many accounts they, do, they want to have. And at the same time, they start creating uh, these accounts, but they need to manage access to this account, right? So they need to provide some policies and this uh, management of these policies of these accounts, it's become, compli uh, it's become uh, difficult. And at the same time, they want to try to manage all these accounts from some unique points, right? You don't want to, like if you have 100 accounts to 
manage each account separately. It will be very painful. And uh, to help customers, uh, AWS uh, uh, like created, invented uh, the term in like a landing zone. And landing zone, this is a like description, how should you prepare uh, your AWS uh, uh, accounts environments before you start uh, deploying applications there. And uh, the part of this uh, landing zone is a multi-account structure. Here, uh, an, here's an example of a uh, multi-account structure that AWS recommend. And here you can see that we have AWS organization. This is a root folder where you should create your accounts and uh, this is the point where you should start manage, manage them. In, inside AWS organizations, we have uh, organizations units like here we have core accounts organization unit, we have team group ac accounts organization unit and developers account organization units. Uh, Organization units, it's like a box for your accounts. And with these uh, boxes, you can uh, define some different permissions and configuration for accounts that belongs to this group. And for example, it was uh, say that uh, at first you should have uh, core accounts organization units. And in this organization units, uh, you will create uh, some accounts that will be unique for, not unique, but they, Mm, will be the only one in your organizations. So for example, here we have log archive account. What this, uh, account, do, this account does? Uh, basically this account, uh, the purpose of this account is to store logs, to store logs from every account that you have. So um, for example, in AWS we have CloudTrail and this CloudTrail service uh, logs uh, all API requests that uh, were sent to AWS, right? So all these logs uh, should be stored to log archive. In case if you have some security issue, then you know where you, where you can find these logs. Because even if you, uh, if um, somebody who breached your security and was able to look into AWS account, if they try to, uh, clean some logs uh, from account, they will be able to do that, but only inside this account. But uh, logs that are stored in separate account will be untouched, right? And um, so, and uh, not only CloudTrail, you can send to this log archive different uh, logs from different application, your application. You can send logs like from uh, uh, VPC flow logs, for example. Right, and again, to this log archive, uh, sh nobody should have access except I don't know, maybe a few people. And again, you may, you might configure notification if anybody logs to this log archive account, because again, this account only to store information. And uh, you might need uh, needs to analyze, for example, some uh, logs from this account. Again, you shouldn't create here any like users and provide access. You can provide access to S3 bucket where these logs are stored. And this, your application can download these logs and works with them. Uh, here we have shared services account. This is account that uh, will store some um, information, data, applications that will be used by different other your AWS accounts. Uh, examples uh, might be, for example, your CI CD system. So here you can locate your Jenkins, GitLab, Spinnaker, or whatever you want. And this account will uh, be used to deploy your application, to deploy your infrastructure and so on. You can uh, use this account, for example, to store uh, images in ECR, right? And again, uh, every account will be able to pull images from there. Or you can uh, even uh, store, for example, uh, pre-baked AMI, and uh, this AMI will be shared with your AWS accounts. Security account, this is the account that uh, should be used by a security team, and this account um, should provide access to every 
other AWS accounts that you have in your AWS organization. So again, if you have security issue, security breach, uh, in this case, your security team should be able to log in to compromised uh, AWS account. You can run from this account some security checks and so on. Next one is team groups, uh, team groups account. This is a uh, organization unit. This is where you are going to create different accounts for different environments for different teams and so on. And last but not least, this is the organization unit developers account. This is account where the, where you, this is organization unit where you create account for accounts for developers, DevOps teams and so on, because everyone uh, need to, to have some place where they can play, they can check something, uh, some theories and so on. And accounts located in this organization unit, they don't have any connectivity to any other infrastructure. Uh, they, so you can be sure if something happened to your AWS account. So for example, I don't know, developer may, <coughs> developer or DevOps made a mistake and this account was compromised. You can be sure that uh, it's like sandboxed and it, no, no threat can come to your uh, uh, major accounts from this uh, account. But still at the same time here, you can see that uh, every uh, AWS account, even, even in developers organization unit should uh, save logs to log archive account. And so implementing all the schema sometimes might be complicated. It, might, it usually takes time, it usually it takes money uh, and so on. And later, after inventing this AWS landing zone, uh, after inventing landing zone, it was introduced AWS, the tool that is called exactly AWS landing zone. That was a set of uh, cloud formation templates that were responsible to deploying all these uh, schemas. Uh, but I, I assume it it's exists uh, yet. It still exists, but. Uh, it's very complicated and um, maybe because of that, uh, by, by the end, the, it was decided they need uh, to prepare and create new tool that can, used, uh, can be used. And this is the control tower. Uh, control tower has like four main points. Uh, the first one is that a uh, control tower can help you to set up an AWS landing zone. It creates uh, some guardrails for, for governance. So these guardrails, you can uh, control what is going on in your, inside your account. It uh, helps you to centralize identity and access management by leveraging the SSO. And uh, it helps you to provision your accounts uh, automatically. So, uh, here on this slide, uh, you can see multi-account architecture that provided by uh, Control Tower after you enabled it. Uh, when you enable Control Tower in your account, um, the first uh, uh, thing that uh, Control Tower does is uh, convert your uh, master account to AWS organization. And it creates very simple uh, structure at the beginning that you can update later. So inside this organization, uh, it creates two or, uh, organization unit, core organization unit, where uh, it will create audit account and log archive account, and custom organization unit uh, that uh, like will, be, will store your new accounts by default in the future. <sighs> On this slide, you can see what control towers exactly creates and how, look, uh, how this automated landing zone looks like. So here you can see that when you enable AWS control tower, it's as I said before, it creates AWS organization. When you have enabled AWS organization, you can configure AWS single sign-on as a central point for your using authentication and it configures it uh, and uh, we will talk about AWS SSO a bit later. Next one that here it creates two uh, organizations units, core organization unit and custom organization unit. 
Inside corner organization unit, it create a log archive account. And I described to you before why you need this account and what's going on. So when it creates this log archive account, and after that, uh, anytime uh, Control Tower creates new accounts for you, it will uh, automatically configure all accounts to send logs from cloud trail and from AWS config to this account. By the way, uh, I think this is a mistake. It shouldn't send AWS config logs to log archive because. Yeah, so it's a mistake on the slide, sorry. So log archive uh, by default stores only cloud trail logs. Uh, then it creates audit account. And this is account uh, where um, control tower configures uh, CloudWatch aggregator, it configures a uh, config uh, service to gather all uh, configuration changes from your different accounts. And uh, in this, uh, from this account, uh, this account will be configured to send any notification in case of any security issues. And it creates, uh, so, and Control Tower creates provision account organization unit for, it's called uh, provision accounts custom, in custom organization units. So it doesn't create any account at the beginning. You can create them later with service catalog. Uh, management of, of all other accounts uh, from this master account is, uh, controlled by stack sets. So under hood, AWS Control Tower uses uh, lots of different uh, cloud formation stacks and it deploys them. Okay, uh, a bit and uh, about AWS SSO. So when you create, uh, when you deploy Control Tower, it configures AWS SSO for you. And AWS SSO provides you mechanism for federated access management across all your accounts. And by default, um, when it's enabled SSO, it will be, it will, it will SSO uses uh, its internal like database for user management. Uh, but you uh, can configure this SSO uh, to work with another uh, sources. For example, uh, it could be Active Directory, and uh, they have a documentation how, for example, you can configure AWS SSO to integrate with Azure AD. As far as I understood that Azure AD by default uh, free of charge at some scale, so it might be very useful because uh, to configure integration between AWS SSO and Azure AD, it will require I don't know, about 30 minutes for you. But after that, all user management can be uh, executed in Azure AD and you won't have, you will not to have to think about users creation, about their management and so on, because uh, all the users, all groups, they will be automatically provisioned uh, from Azure AD to your AWS account. Simple case, uh, not case study, but uh, happy story is that uh, we did on my current project. Uh, so our client has uh, uh, not now even more, but when uh, we come to this client, they have this client has uh, had about uh, 10, 10 it was accounts and they used it to create IAM users for each account. So they didn't use any roles. And every time when they needed it, to create user, it uh, took so much time from them. And the first step was that we uh, implemented some Terraform code. Uh, we created a master users account and it simplified many things, but still, uh, you know, my DevOps, uh, not DevOps, but one of the chiefs, they said that um, they didn't want to spend time on managing user, on creating them providing some uh, permissions uh, and so on. So later we configured AWS SSO, configured uh, integration with Azure ID, and 
you know, I haven't heard anything about any requests about add user, update user, or something like that since February. So it's very useful tool, I think. Okay, uh, so, but uh, one moment that uh, if you decide to use AWS SSO, you need to check, uh, you need to check limitation because um, SSO has limitations about how many uh, permission sets you can define for AWS account. And another great issue, and I hope that they will solve it later or soon, that uh, AWS SSO doesn't provide API. So uh, this means that you can't leverage like CloudFormation, Terraform, and any other tool to uh, manage permission sets, so description of roles and so on in repository. So you need to create these permission sets manually. That's bad, and that's sad. Okay, uh, the next uh, like area that uh, Control Tower provide you when you enable it, it, uh, it provides you guardrails. And uh, here we have two, in general, we have two guardrails. The first one is the preventive guardrails. And uh, preventive guardrails, basically this is the service control policy that uh, Control Tower applies to your accounts. Uh, what is service control policy? I'm not sure how many, all of you or not knows what is it, but basically service control policy, this is uh, the policy that defines maximum permissions that uh, allowed in particular AWS account. So, uh, for example, uh, you know that uh, when you have uh, AWS account and you have root access, this means that you can uh, do in this account anything you want. Right, but when your account belongs to organization, you can apply service control policy that, for example, uh, um, that for deny you to create any RDS instance. So, uh, if you apply this service control policy to uh, your AWS account, in this case, even root user won't be able to create RDS. So, uh, this is very useful, uh, so the service control policies, they are very useful uh, if you want to, like, um, you want to look what resources, what type of resources, what region can be used. For example, uh, might be that you have a project that should be PCI DSS compliant. And you know that in this case, your account, uh, in, the, in your account, you should, use only AWS services that PCI DSS compliant. In this case, you can uh, create service control policy and define in this service control policy that uh, only some services that are compliant can be used in this account. And after that, you, uh, you kind of can be free. You shouldn't think about if anybody creates a resource that uh, not compliant and you're going to have an issue. So if you apply this control, service control policy, you, this means that all your accounts always will be uh, compliant to this policy. Uh, example of service control policies that applied by default, for example, is that uh, nobody can disable uh, cloud trail, uh, sending cloud trail logs from AWS account to log archive account. Uh, the second one uh, type of guardrails is a it's detective, and in this case, AWS uses AWS config uh, rules to describe uh, to track resources that you have in your AWS account, and uh, all this uh, result, uh, results of these rules they gather it to separate account, and if uh, your resource, uh, some resource in some account. Uh, doesn't comply. In this case, you are going to, uh, to get a notification. Unfortunately, uh, right now, um, AWS uh, doesn't allow you to create your like personal config rules that you can apply to your AWS account. They don't allow you to create a personal service control policies that you want to, to create. Uh, 
so right now they provide you some number of this uh, preventive and detective guardrails that you can enable for your accounts, but uh, you can't update them. But I hope that again, they will uh, fix this soon uh, because uh, I think they try and they are to kind of try to uh, make this product better based on the feedbacks from different customers. Okay, and last word about this uh, guardrails again uh, that uh, enable them for your account. It's very easy. You uh, like just go to console, select account, select what uh, rules you want to apply to this account, and all these uh, rules will be applied automatically. And last but not least is account factory. So when we work with um, uh, with AWS, uh, with accounts, we need to create them. And of course, we want to have uh, like, you know, equal configuration for every account. And here uh, you can use account factory. Uh, basically, this is a product and service catalog. And with account factory, uh, you will create new, you create new accounts. And every new account uh, that created uh, will be configured to uh, have some network configuration to, uh, to, to this account will be, will be applied some preventive and detective guardrails. Automatically this account uh, in this account will be permissioned all the roles that you need. And but again so here for example as I said that we have a network baseline you can configure network cider and use it. Uh, yes, but I wouldn't recommend to do that because uh, from network perspective, it's not very, it's not flexible. Uh, so if you provide network cider for this account factory, it will use this uh, cider all the time when you create new account. So uh, this is the first point. So if you use it, by the end you have uh, different VPCs and they have overlapping. That's not very good. Yes, if you want, you can update network cider each time when you create new cider. And in this case, you will have different VPC with different uh, cider blocks. But at the same time, uh, this network cider, uh, this uh, network configuration allows you to leverage only two availability, availability zones. And there are some limitations on number of uh, subnets that you can create. So I assume, I, from my perspective, it's better to create account with account factory without any network configuration. And then uh, you can create your VPC configuration with uh, tool that you like to use. I don't know, web console, cloud formation, uh, Terraform, doesn't matter. Uh, by the way, one of the key points here is that uh, when you create account factory, uh, when you create account with account factory, uh, this means that in this new account, all default VPCs will be deleted. Uh, so to accord to best practice, AWS best practices. Okay, so here, uh, almost last slide. Again, uh, some like sum up that uh, to this, cloud, this uh, control tower, you can create automated landing zone, you can manage, uh, you can, uh, use different policies and you can quickly uh, enable uh, create accounts for your uh, accounts for your organization i can say like uh, that for now unfortunately i have only two cases that i can share with you when we leverage this control tower uh, the first one on projects that we have in software right now so this is a startup and uh, to create uh, accounts that can be used uh, dur during uh, during developing this uh, startup, uh, our DevOps spent about like one hour to develop to install Control Tower, but not one hour. One hour. This is the time that Control Tower requires to create all stuffs uh, stuff. What you need to do is just provide two MLs, click enable, and, and one hour later, you will have all this uh, in place. And then you need about, I think, 20 to 30 minutes to provision your account if you want. 
So on this project, uh, the world spent uh, like an hour to create all accounts that will be needed uh, for the future. Instead of trying to develop uh, Terraform or CloudFormation code to build all this landing zone and so on. Another, uh, again, this control tower from my perspective is very easy to use too. Why? Because I have a friend and he kind of Kubernetes guru and he used to work with Google a bit but basically in general it was uh, you know Kubernetes on-prem and that's all and one day he asked me he said he was going to create it was account because they wanted to start moving their applications there and he asked me how to build uh, how many accounts, again, <laughs> he faced the same issues that he doesn't understand how many accounts he needs, how to create them and so on and so on. So I recommend him to, he spent try on uh, trying to figure out all the stuff like a few days Then he came to me, we talked and I say, okay, if you don't know all this stuff, you can leverage this control tower and that's all. And really I don't was, but uh, like three hours later he said, hey, it's already all the stuff already in place and they can start working. So this is really cool and this is very easy to use. And here I have last slide. Uh, uh, I'm going to tell you the truth that I did this presentation like in November 2019 uh, in Dupont. And this is uh, the list of, you know, like minuses of this uh, tool that for now it supports only four regions that it uh, you couldn't use control tower for, to existing project that you had some limitation with domain names and so on and so on and so here you can see that i crossed out three uh, points because uh, right now you can use uh, control tower if you have already uh, organization in place. You, st you can enable it because before you should had to uh, clean it was account that never that was never used in, in organizations. They uh, had a limitation on uh, emails. So for example if you create uh, your address organization with master domain uh, with master mail in domain softserve.ing.com surfing.com, then th that meant that you had to create, anytime you want to provision new account, you had to use a uh, email from the same domain. Now it's not, not a point anymore. You can use any domain that you want. Uh, co Control Tower used to manage only accounts that uh, were created from account factory. And now it's not a problem if you have already created account somewhere or you for example invited new account to your organization uh, you can import kind of import this account to uh, control tower so for now as i see we have like three major questions that the number of regions that supported but again from management management perspective it's not really problem it doesn't uh, cloud uh, control tower sorry doesn't support uh, api that's a problem i think it's because nobody of us likes to go to web console and click on something and right now we have uh, like limitations that all guardrails we can uh, rely only on guardrails uh, guard guardrails that are provided by aws that's all from my side. Thanks a lot for your patience. If you have any questions, I'm ready to, or I'm, I'm going to try to answer you. Um, hello, Sergey. This is Petro. I got one question uh, regarding policies. So you mentioned that you already have a cloud formation stack and you define uh, all your deployments. Uh, would you mind to clarify uh, in which kind or which type of file uh, policies should be defined? Should it be JSON, YAML file, or standard uh, permission or policy file for Amazon? 
I, uh, I'm not sure that I got your question. Are you talking about service control policies? For yeah. yeah. Uh, this, so this policy, they look like usual uh, policies in AWS. So we easily could attach it like uh, in some file and it will be applied. And, and with this workaround, we're able to have like a template for, for, for this policy. Uh, yes, you can, but again, uh, uh, you know, I tried to play with service control policies when we have a deployed control tower. And here you should be very careful because uh, it's very easy to break all the system. If you, for example, uh, apply your service control policy to some account and uh, you like deny some permissions and control tower requires, in this case, you will break this account. So control tower stop working with it. It's uh, complaining that uh, this account is broken. I can't update this. I can't update that and so on. So, Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the one question from my side. <clears throat> you mentioned that control tower is not available on all AWS regions yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so in case if customer has uh, existing infrastructure in some regions uh, where control tower is not available, is there any solution for this case? Uh, yeah, again, so for example, let's pretend that uh, your customer has all infrastructure deployed to, I don't know, front region, right? And we don't have control tower in this region. You can select just uh, uh, use East One, North Virginia, and use this region to enable control tower. Really, I'm not sure what's the problem with this limitation, but uh, again, because control tower under hood uh, in most cases manages uh, different global resources, uh, there is no problem where you have this control tower enabled. So for, because for example, uh, I don't know, I can't imagine the problem that you can face if you have control tower in region A and all your application and resources in region B. Okay, yeah, thanks. Mm 